Christian God, a God of gaps? Hello, my name is Sierra, and welcome to No Excuses. I'm a Christian artist from Papua New Guinea, and I make content defending and strengthening the Christian faith. This is episode 2 of Responding to Top 10 Logical Reasons that Prove God Doesn't Exist by Crunch on YouTube. The link to episode 1 and the original video will be in the description along with all the sources I cite in the rest of the video. I'll be responding to reason number 9 today. Number 9. God of Gaps Hey believers over there, we agree with you, and here's how. Now that we have your attention, could you explain the idea of God of Gaps that is your argument of his existence? You somehow prove God's existence by pointing out phenomenon that science can't explain, and hence, they're facilitated by God. In ancient times, Greeks believed Poseidon to be behind earthquakes, but it's now been proved a scientific activity. Can our lack of knowledge about the universe substitute for the existence of another force? That's not very convincing, sorry. Here's the thing, I 100% agree with this guy. God being proven through things we don't understand isn't convincing at all. The idea of a god of gaps is defined by Wikipedia as a theological perspective in which gaps in scientific knowledge are taken to be evidence or proof of God's existence. When I had first watched this video, I had never heard of this idea of god of gaps. I can't speak for everyone, but I've never met any Christian who claims to believe in this. But when I started to research the topic, I realized atheists like to play this idea a lot with Christians in debates and online. They push the idea that the god of Christianity is against science. Crunch even said it at the end of his video. What do you believe in? Science or God? So, how should Christians respond to being called anti-science? To my shock and horror, I found a lot of Christians online accepting that the church is often anti-science. Then I found an interview of John Lennox by Veritas Forum. Mr. Lennox goes to say, the God he's talking about is defined to be in competition with science. If our God really is just the explanation for what we don't understand, then yes, logically he is at odds with science. But such a God is a false God. And idol made by atheists. The true God of Christianity is brilliantly different from the God of gaps because there is a difference between faith and ignorance. Christian faith allows us to trust that whatever we don't understand or know, God does. Our God works through science and nature, not against it. He uses his creation to do his will. He is in control. We don't believe in God because of the gaps in science, or at least we shouldn't. In fact, I feel like this idea of a God of gaps might be used as a way to cover up any problems Christians find in the logic of the evolutionary theory. Just to point that out. I agree with Crunch that the God of Gaps idea is a very weak basis for faith, but I just don't see why that would make a believer tremble and his faith crumble. Interestingly enough, in my research, I always saw this idea of a God of Gaps leading back to the idea that Christians are brainless to believe what they do. There are thousands of incredibly smart Christians in almost every field of science. Our faith doesn't inhibit science, but allows it to thrive. The greatest interest I have in any science is discovering how God did something. It's an amazing way to praise God for all he's done. On the flip side of the argument, I would have to point out that atheists believe in there is no God of gaps idea. Many atheists claim that the reason they don't believe in God is because there isn't enough proof. They cannot prove there is no God, but regardless, they throw any possibility of there being a God right out of the window. I find this slightly humorous because atheists cannot scientifically explain the existence of everything. Their origin story can only logically go back to the Big Bang. Now, listen, this isn't a God of gaps idea at all. What I'm trying to point out is that everything can't come from nothing. That idea is anti-scientific. Something eternal or outside time had to exist first. I hope I've helped you understand the whole idea of the God of Gaps and haven't offended you too much. If you liked the video, please let me know by clicking the thumbs up. This will help more people see the video. If you have any questions or objections, please tell me by leaving a comment. I'm still learning and I always will be. Undoubtedly, I'm going to make some mistakes. If you have any ideas for future videos or any questions about Christianity in general, let me know. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.